I've been using iPhone 10 for the last 10 days and I have to tell you this is the first time Apple introduced a newly designed iPhone that doesn't have a gate or a fiasco since the first generation iPhone. Okay, don't clap. Just think about it, every new design iPhone had a gate. iPhone 3G cracked by itself, iPhone 4 lost signal when you held it, iPhone 5 came with scuff gate, iPhone 6 was easy to bend, and then something happened and I think they lost their... What's that word? What's, what's that word that Phil Schiller says? Oh yeah, courage! So they just perfected iPhone 6 design and stayed with it until iPhone 10. But also, probably we angered the Apple gods because they started removing stuff from our devices. MacBook lost their ports and their function keys. And our iPhones lost their headphone jack. And with iPhone 10, we lost the touch ID and home button. And someone took a bite out of my screen. So if you'd like to know more about what happens when you use iPhone 10 for a while, and if you're trying to decide between these three phones, I am here to help. I love the Kinect, I mean the true depth camera system we have on iPhone 10. It's a little unfortunate that people ended up calling this an emoji machine. But whose fault is that? No one talked about how much this tiny motion capture device can do on our devices or actually where it came from. See in November 2013 Apple bought PrimeSense. They are the people behind Xbox's Kinect. I was at Kinect's launch event and actually they gave us these. It was a magical night. Anyway, now four years later we have that Kinect camera system on top of our phones. So Animoji was a kid's play. There's so much more True Depth camera can do. This opens doors to a brand new user experience but Apple decided to go with Animojis like facial controls swipe left swipe right we already have a baby version of that in our phones we can have hand gestures without touching the phone i'm telling you in the future this will be reading your lips also apple has been a good boy they've been listening to me i asked for a black iphone and they did and then i showed them how i can find my airpods with this technique and then they implemented Apple, it in iOS. And then I talked about ring according to environment. We need a ringtone or a notification. If I'm in a quiet meeting, maybe it should go And if I'm in a bar, it should go as loud as it can, the screen flash and it vibrate as hard as it can. Ring according to the environment. You can steal the name, you can steal the idea, there you go, it's yours. See, I did. And then they added this feature called Attention Aware Features. Adjusts the notification sounds accordingly and it works, they're really nice. So if these are things you care about, then you may want to prefer iPhone 10 instead of 8 or 8 plus. Now let's talk about apps. Remember how apps were gigantic when iPhone 6 plus first came out? because the developers didn't update their apps for iPhone 6 Plus. Well, we're having a similar situation here. Even though Apple asked repeatedly, some apps are still not optimized for iPhone 10. And as you can see, because it is not optimized, even though iPhone 10 has a taller screen than iPhone 8 Plus, you get to see less. So you have to wait for developers to update their apps. If this is something that's gonna bother you, I suggest you pick iPhone 8 or 8 Plus. iPhone 10 is unquestionably beautiful. The way the screen blends into stainless steel is just, ah, beautiful. I love how actually I can see all the previous iPhones when I look at this design. It is very nicely done. I also realized you can recognize iPhone 10 from a distance. Let's say you are about to buy coffee and there's someone over there. When you look, you can tell that they're holding 
an iPhone 10, not from the traffic light inspired camera, but from the shape of it, from how shiny it is around the stainless steel. Even when the screen is off, there's something about this that you can tell it's an iPhone 10 and well, congratulations Apple. The camera bump on this device is very thick and a little sharp. I was actually able to peel an apple with it. In the beginning I thought it was an interesting choice but then I realized when you put this into a case it looks more flush than beveled cameras. Even though I wish iPhone 10 was as big as iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 10 size is very ideal. So yes, iPhone 10's design is beautiful, but so is iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. The glass backside is beautiful and it's not gonna scratch like how iPhone 7 Jet Black did. But if you care for a fresh design, instead of this design we've been seeing since iPhone 6, then yes, iPhone 10 is the phone for you. Thanks to iPhone 10's perfect reachability function, you can actually use this phone with one hand if you like to use this keyboard feature as well. You can go into your notifications like this or you can go into your control center with one hand. And you get used to this in time so you start doing it without even thinking about it. iPhone 10 is curvy, actually very curvy. There are curves everywhere. And Apple did really interesting design choices on the top and bottom of the screen. Of course I can understand the bottom of the screen because this is how much your finger can reach. But when I open up the same thing on iPhone 8 Plus, as you can see normally you can see 26 lines in the both phones and when the keyboard is in you can see more on iPhone 8 Plus. And when you hold them sideways, you can actually see two and a half lines where you can see four lines on iPhone 8 Plus. You can see 12 lines on iPhone 8 and when you hold it sideways, you can see four lines on iPhone 8 as well. Oh, by the way, am I the only one who thinks this was the inspiration for the notch? And as you can see, because of the waste of space, I actually happen to see more or less the same thing on iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 10, and even on iPhone 8. So even though iPhone 10 has higher screen resolution and more pixels per inch, the result isn't that different unless you want to use VR glasses or Google Cardboard. Also, yes, iPhone 10 has darker blacks, but the screen is OLED and OLED flickers when you turn the brightness down. No one seems to complain about this, so I did a research and it turns out, yes, OLED can dim the screen only so far and then to make it even darker, the refresh rate is reduced. Which means when you're outside, yes, this isn't flickering and you're outside, there's a lot of light, so it wouldn't even matter if this was flickering outside. But when you're in your bedroom, it's nighttime, you're looking into your screen, your eyes may feel something. If you have ophthalmic migraine like I do, you may feel something. iPhone 8 and 8 Plus doesn't flicker at all no matter what brightness settings you are in. All these three phones have True Tone Display and True Tone Display is really nice because it adjusts your screen's warmth according to the environment. But one interesting thing is when you look at iPhone 10 at an angle the color shifts. But iPhone 10 screen supports HDR and Dolby Vision. Also, the sample rate is 120 Hz. It's not the refresh rate, it is sample rate, which means your touch is sensed twice more than iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, which is 60 Hz. See, I created an iPhone 10 in the Photoshop. Let's turn this on. Let's just take these two and place them here. It fits there better. And then let's get our time. 
and put the time here because on our MacBook the time is on the right and already we have more space and and let's not just leave it there if this phone was a little bit less curvier a little bit less things are fitting a little nicer I don't know maybe with iPhone 10 plus when I switch back to iPhone 8 or 8 plus after using iPhone 10 my OCD gets a break and I was trying to understand what I was feeling when I go back to this from this and I think I can describe this as this feels like I'm looking at a paper that has zero crease or it's not crumbled it's not easy to explain when you start looking at this this doesn't look like you're looking at a crumbled creased paper this looks normal but from this when you go back to this somehow it looks it complements your eye more this has too much going on on the screen and here and there the icons at the top are not really in the middle with the notch but with this there is a perfected design if that is something you care about then iPhone 8 or 8 plus can be right for you the gestures as I mentioned before are fantastic and you get used to them very very easily because these are gestures we use on iPad or snapchat or similar programs so we are familiar with them and I actually cannot believe they revived reachability reachability is just perfect it just works and I love it but there are still some insane Apple style limitations for example when you go into your notification center these shortcuts the flashlight which works by force touch are not customizable I would very much like to have Apple TV and HomeKit here instead of these two also if you like plus sized phones there are a couple of things you have to know about iPhone 10 as well mainly when you turn your phone sideways the icons turn sideways on the main home screen on iPhone 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus but with iPhone 10 the icons stay the way they are when you go into an app yeah of course it turns sideways but as you can see you cannot see the two columns you only see one column when you go into your weather app you cannot take advantage of holding it sideways you cannot have the two column settings that you get in plus sized iPhones also the keyboard when you hold your phone sideways is not very useful when iPhone 6 plus came out I wrote an article about this and I come to a conclusion that the keyboard has to be like this and as you can see because of the curves the iCloud writing here the down button and everything and then the weird space is all wasted so if you like using your iPhone plus sideways a lot know that it is going to be a little different with iPhone 10. having Siri on the side button it's actually a little bit of fun because it feels like you're talking on a walkie-talkie what's the weather like looks like nice weather coming up today up to 68 degrees well that's not nice when it comes to camera just like iPhone 8 plus when you're shooting in high efficiency 4k 60 frames per second you cannot switch between lenses you can only use the digital zoom you have to stop the video and then switch to the other lens and then you can zoom into 6x the optic image stabilization on telephoto lens is fine it is better than nothing but it's not a lifesaver but f2.4 aperture compared to f2.8 is better in low light you can see a difference but overall iPhone 8 iPhone 8 plus and iPhone 10 have amazing rear cameras but just so you know they still record audio in mono yes your $1,150 iPhone 10 still records audio in mono while you're shooting video when it comes to front facing cameras they're all 7 megapixels but of course iPhone 10, as you may have seen in my in-depth review video has some different features thanks to the 
true depth camera system you can use portrait mode and have depth effect in your photos also now in clips using the same feature you can select scenes and it just crops you out of your background and puts you in millennium falcon or mega destroyer or turns me into 8-bit which is not bad at all so yeah there is more fun stuff you can do with iphone 10's front facing camera compared to iphone 8 and 8 plus so if selfie is important for you or if you want the best cameras there is on an iphone yes iphone 10 is the phone for you now let's talk about face id in my in-depth review iphone 10's face id didn't work in the beginning and i got a lot of comments telling me what i should have done but if you watch it carefully the face id isn't getting activated it is not about how I scanned my face or anything else you can see from the camera that the IR lights are not flashing so the problem in the beginning was it wasn't being activated it wasn't even scanning for a face and right after I did my iOS update everything went back to normal and it's been working like a charm ever since but is it as good as touch id there are a lot of really nice things about face id it works when it's on the table and the more you use it the faster it works it doesn't matter if this if you're under the sun if the, it doesn't matter if the sun is coming behind you if the light is coming behind you it just works and it works fine but i realized when i'm walking and, it, and when my arms are getting shaken let's say you have a shopping cart in your arm and then your arm is getting shaken it is not as fast as you can guess also you cannot add a second face you can add five fingers on touch id but you cannot add a second face on iphone 10 so for example my wife has to put in the passcode every time she wants to unlock my phone touch id works every time every place in every scenario with the same speed it just unlocks and you're in sometimes face id doesn't work that fast but mostly yeah it is so if consistency in unlocking your phone matters to you then i would suggest going with iphone 8 or 8 plus when it comes to battery life iphone 10 definitely has less battery life compared to iphone 8 plus at the end of the day my iphone 8 plus usually has 60 to 70 percent battery and this usually has 30 percent battery and my iphone 8 usually has 20 to 30 percent battery so i am gonna say this is better than iphone 8 but nowhere close to iphone 8 plus the earpiece on iphone 10 sounds really good it sounds fuller i don't know if you ever used nokia 6110 it had a fantastic earpiece and this is very much like that the the sound is really good I like it a lot it's not like that on iPhone 8 or iPhone 8 plus also the general sound coming out from the speakers is more natural compared to these phones I like the sound coming out of this iPhone 10 has a different ringtone and different wallpapers compared to these phones if you don't have Apple care and if you drop this phone and if you break the screen it's gonna cost you $279 if you drop this phone and break the back side it's gonna cost you $549 and when it comes to prices iPhone 10 is the most expensive one it goes up to $1150 for the 256 gigabyte version there's a 64 gigabyte version which is $999 but if you get the 64 gigabyte version which means you're gonna get 50 to 52 gigabytes of free space for you to use I believe very quickly you're gonna have a bad time if you're wondering if iPhone 10 is coming with anything special no it's not coming with anything special at all it's exactly like iPhone 8 or 8 plus the same thing comes out of the box no fast charger no wireless charger no airpods or anything also next year when they announce the new phones i feel like iphone 8 and 8 plus is gonna lose more value compared to iphone 10 so that's something you may want to consider before purchasing any of these phones but in the end they are all 
fantastic phones. So whatever you're buying, you're buying a great phone. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you pick a phone and I hope it gave you an idea what's it like to spend more time with iPhone 10. Please let me know what you think. What, which one would you pick? In the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoşçakalın.